they have varying styles. I think that was the very that's the interesting thing about the two groups was that uh, adventure consultants. Um, I think Rob Hall was very detail oriented, very organized, uh, very particular way. And um, as my character says in the movie, and I think as it's been sort of discovered, you know, uh, Scott Fisher sort of believed that Rob Hall was a bit of a handholder and took his clients up, you know, holding their hand up the mountain, as he would say. And Scott Fisher's point of view and Mount Madness team's point of view was sort of more to let people climb on their own, to find their way. Um, I, we liken it on this production, but I liken it to, you know, different parents in a way, parenting techniques, you know, the parent who says, don't go over there and touch that stove because you'll get burned. And then the other parent who says, well, go let them get burned once and then they'll never touch the stove again. <laughs> um, that's Those are sort of differing points of view, I think, in both teams um, on the mountain. I think equally as effective, given the fact that Rob Hall and Scott Fisher were both pretty extraordinary climbers, um, but very different um, and hard to work together in a way because inevitably they were going to clash in style. Um, but down the line, as conditions got more serious and Rob Hall and both Scott Fisher got worried about what was going on, they did team up and it was a very interesting thing. I think that's what makes the movie so fascinating to me is the two different types of techniques having to work together in order to you know, get to the top of the mountain. A storm did come in um, and ultimately I think that was sort of that was really the most dangerous thing. That really, that was really, I think, nature kind of putting a lid on the whole thing. You know, that was that was the uh, that was it at that point. But there were a number of human choices along the way that, to me, make this story so incredible. You know, those choices we make in life where we try and think we think we're being safe, we're trying to protect someone, and ultimately fate has its way. I met Scott Fisher's children in doing research for the movie, and they talked about going to Nepal themselves and going to the base of the mountain and meeting many people who knew their father that they had not met before the trip. And so often the response to them was full of love about what their father had done for this person that they're meeting or how much he listened or how fun he was or how loving he was. and. Um, I think that was Scott Fisher's general attitude was um, he talked a lot about how he, he didn't fear death. Um, and I think that kept him very present and kept him very positive. And I think that was the general attitude he had throughout most of his life and particularly when he was climbing. I mean, you know, it's said in this film, but it's also said in general that his he had this phrase, which was, you know, it's it's the attitude, not the altitude, you know, and um, I think sort of mind over matter in that way, and I, I believe in that, and he's been inspiring to play and even to research because I could use a little bit more of that in my own life, and, um, you know, I believe that characters and people, but particularly characters you play, can be therapeutic, and he definitely has been. We all lived in the same place for a very long time when we were up in the mountains in Italy. So we would come down and have dinner all together. We would all drink together. We would all have breakfast together. Um, we would all play music together. We would all talk about so many different things. We all have tons of conversations that are offset. Because the irony of this movie is when you're on set, most of the time you can't hear each other very well or it's in difficult conditions. Or So we, we spent a lot of time together. We feel, I feel very closely knit with the people on this movie and the actors in particular. There is a fearlessness to him. There is a danger to the way in which he sort of directs that's also um, that I think you feel in his movies. And I think, but at the same time, he's incredibly protective of the people he's putting in front of the camera. I feel that way about him. Like we'd be shooting in, in pretty intense, semi-dangerous places, and he would always, I remember specifically, I had no gloves in one point, and he took off his own gloves and he gave them to me because I had been standing out there in the cold and scene without any gloves, and he was rubbing my hands, you know, keeping them warm, but he still put me out in the middle of the cold. He wanted me to be out there and he wanted the elements to be real, 
So for me, that sort of sums him up in a whole, just his ability, he wants this movie to be massive. He wants this movie to feel dangerous. He wants you to feel exhilarated in the process. Yet at the same time, there's a huge beating heart underneath it. And his interactions with the actors, because he began as an actor himself, is intimate and knowledgeable and committed in a way you don't get with a lot of huge, huge, huge film directors who are great visualists. But I think him and Sal, cinematographer, doing an amazing job creating, you know, the character, in my opinion, the star of the movie, which is Mount Everest.